Okay, so good evening, everybody. I, Dr. Avni Skandan, invite you all on behalf of IRIA Preventive Radiology to this wonderfully unique webinar series where IRIA Preventive Radiology team joins hands with IRIA Kerala team, Swasti Foundation, and Community Oncology Department at RCC Trivandrum. We join hands together to raise awareness, span various societies, institutes, and the public towards preventive oncology. Prevention is better than cure. Why wait for a disaster to happen when it's in our control to prevent and stall the process in most instances? By merely being aware, reducing the risk factors, lifestyle modifications, screening, and follow up. Some small modifications and alterations can help us in prevention or early detection of cancer and downstaging the malignancy and improving the quality of our life. With such a forward thought and a defined aim in mind, these groups are joining hands together with a single motto of a cancer crusade in Kerala and on a mission to generate literacy towards cancer. Under the able vision of Dr. Rijo Matthew, National Coordinator, Preventive Radiology and Secretary of Kerala IRIA, the other pioneers to this project are Dr. Gomati Subramaniam, President of Kerala IRIA, Mr. N.G. Srikumar, Swasti Foundation President, Mr. A.B. George, Swasti Foundation Secretary, Dr. Jay Krishnan, Assistant Professor, Department of Community Oncology, RCC Trivandrum. I welcome each one of you, sirs, for this session. I welcome our Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. Mohanan, sir, Vice Chancellor, Kerala University of Health Sciences, and the Speaker of the Day, Dr. Bipin Gopal, Nodal Officer for Non-Communicable Diseases, Kerala State Health Services, also for this event. Now, to start off uh, with our official session, I would like to welcome our National Coordinator for Preventive Radiology, Dr. Rijo Matthew, sir, to deliver the presidential address. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Avni. Uh, our Chief Guest, Dr. Mohanan, sir, the Vice Chancellor of Kerala University of Health Sciences. Our speaker of the day, the Nodal Officer for NCD, the Non-Communicable Diseases of State Health, Depart Health Services. Dr. Jay Krishnan, the Additional Professor in Community Oncology, Regional Cancer Center, Trivandrum. And all the dignitaries. So preventive radiology is a new branch in radiology. All of you are familiar with diagnostic and interventional radiology, but preventive radiology is trying to focus and give new uh, space and scope for radiologists to utilize the clinical radiological services with the in the larger realm of uh, preventive medicine and public health. So with that intention, we have been working on several projects. One of them is a national, that is a fatty liver project that uh, and the liver elastography training programs throughout the country, 12 programs in, in a span of 12 years. And the next focus was on preventive cardioradiology, the focus on atherosclerotic vascular disease, atherosclerotic coronary artery disease. And the third focus is cancer screening and early detection and downstaging, and especially modification of uh, risk factors for uh, non-communicable diseases. So with that intention, we have been uh, working together with several organizations, jointly we've got like-minded organizations, and uh, Sosti Foundation is one such organization which has taken great uh, uh, steps in this direction in Kerala. The last Prundi Wongko Summit conducted in Trivandrum was a major eye-opener and a major point uh, rendezvous for discussion on all these things. So this is definitely, this program is a follow-out of that particular event in which uh, the Kerala University Health Sciences Vice Chancellor Mohanan Sir and Dr. Bibin Kobal, the Nodal Officer from State Health Services and Dr. Jay Krishnan, all, all of us were part of it and had quite a bit, bit, bit of interesting deliberations there. So uh, I consider this as a continuation of whatever we discussed there into an action plan. This is now a time for us to come together, have a consensus on the required action plan for state of Kerala for the eight year plan that it's a Kerala cancer crusade and the cancer literacy mission that all of us have embarked upon. So thank you very much. And uh, we will jointly go forward on this endeavor and make this cancer awareness, cancer literacy mission a success and also the Kerala Cancer Crusade a successful venture so that the downstaging of cancer is possible. We can offer quality life for cancer survivors in this state. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for that insightful address and briefing us exactly about what preventive radiology is and the scope of the same. 
Next, I would like to welcome our chief guest of the day, Dr. Mohanan Sir, Vice Chancellor, Kerala University of Health Sciences, to kindly inaugurate the function. Thank you, Dr. Avni. Uh, chief guest, the president of today's function, uh, Dr. Rijo Matthew, the uh, coordinator of preventive radiology national level and also the state secretary of IRIA Kerala chapter, the speaker of today's uh, program, Dr. Bibin Gopal, uh, who is dealing with non-communicable disease for government of Kerala, Dr. Jay Krishnan, who is an associate professor of community oncology from regional cancer center, Dr. Ramesh Shenai, and other eminent uh, the panel panelists who are participating in today's webinar. I'm extremely happy to be associated with this wonderful function, which is being organized as a part of Kerala Cancer Crusade and Cancer Literacy Mission. So this is the first uh, webinar, which is organized by Indian Radiological and Imaging Association. It's preventive radiology uh, wing. And this collaboration is going to do wonderful changes in the state. In fact, all of us are health professionals and our fundamental job is to prevent health hazards, promote health and preserve health. All the three threes, three Ps, this is what we are supposed to do. And prevention is the cornerstone of any health activity. At the time of independence, an average Indian has got a lifespan of 32 years. Now, on an average, an Indian will live up to 70 years. And if the person is a lady in Kerala, it is 79 years. So such a huge change has happened. And in that change, when you live longer, the diseases of longevity catches up. And uh, the, of course, we have uh, reasonably fought the war with communicable diseases. Uh, once in a while you get a COVID, but it doesn't matter. But then the non-communicable diseases are a big problem and we have identified cancer as a big challenge. So the recent meeting conducted in Trivandrum uh, with various stakeholders realized that this is an area all of us should fight. and. The problem with cancer is that, of course, like any other disease, it will take your life. But more than that, it will cause a lot of morbidity, not only to the patient, but to the people around. The family will suffer hugely. Financial burden will be the society will suffer. And it's a huge tragedy. And But the uh, good news is that large number of cancers can be prevented. But that message has not gone all around. People still don't know that uh, this information. So we have to percolate that information all around. And number two, many of the cancers we can detect very early. And if you detect early, we can cure them. Many years ago, when we were school students, we have seen Kamala Hassan dying due to leukemia. But then that is only in the old movies. Now the recent movies don't make like that because leukemia is completely curable. So the situation has come like that. But then this news has not spread. So the news has to be spread all around. And then therefore we must spread the awareness about cancer. The cancer is preventable. The cancer is early detectable. The cancer is curable. And even if you have a very uh, late cancer, still you can have a comfortable life. Luckily, probably one of the best palliative care uh, uh, services in the whole world probably is in Kerala. So, but that area is good. But then the earlier part, we are not still not good. So the prevention and early detection. So that news also has to spread. So the number one is improvement of awareness. 
And here, the cancer literacy mission plays a very good role. In fact, Kerala had several literacy movements. Kerala, we have, we are, we are saying that we are hundred percent literate. Technically, yes, but then uh, that carries a lot of uh, advantage. And number two, just because people are aware, that is not enough. If somebody is aware that uh, uh, if I am suspecting uh, breast cancer, I must do a mammography and early uh, breast cancer can be detected by mammography. But then we must have mammography machines available. We must have mammography services available. We may have, we should have cervical pap smear uh, services available. So we should have availability of the facilities also. So awareness is number one. And number two, availability. And here, uh, you know, you, 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 cancer, when you think about, speak about cancer, you think about a five-star hospital. You could think about a huge hospital. Why not? Cancer can be treated in a taluk hospital. Why not? Cancer can be treated in a small hospital. And one day, we will be able to treat cancer in primary health centers also. Because if you can treat hypertension, if you can treat diabetes, it is one other disease. But of course, certain patients who are having cardiac problem needs a huge hospital, huge facility. But rest of the cases, we are treating in a primary health center. Dr. Bibin Gobal will know better than that. So, so the availability of treatment for cancer, that is the second point. Awareness, availability, and the third most important point, even if it is available, if it is not affordable, then it's a big challenge. Because of cancer, many families have been destroyed and therefore it should be affordable also. So if these three, three A's, I, I should say, availability, the uh, awareness, availability, affordability, the war can be won. So the first war, which we are going to do right now is spreading the awareness. And here, uh, the IRIA Preventive Radiology, uh, the national program has got a huge role because imaging can detect large number of cancers. It can predict large number of uh, diseases. And also now with availability of digital technology, all these informations can be stored, passed, analyzed, big data analysis, all these things are possible. And of course, that is the topic of today. And I, I should not go into that. The expert is with us, Dr. Bibin Gobal. So uh, with these few words, I declare today's program inaugurated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. You set the right note for the entire event. And like Sir rightly mentioned, the disease of longevity, non-communicable diseases are the leading health burden at this moment. And that's the importance for each of us to understand the, the role that we will play in prevention for ourselves and for the society. Now I request Dr. Jay Krishnan, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Community Oncology, RCC Trivandrum, to kindly invite the speaker of the day, Dr. Bipin Gopal, sir. Uh, good evening, Mohanan, sir, Dr. Jijo, Dr. Bipin. Dr. Abhani and uh, distinguished uh, panelists and uh, other attendees. So we have with us uh, Dr. Bibin Kobal. I think all of you are familiar with this person. He's a big man with a big heart. <laughs> Always, you know, very uh, humble, modest, and whatever words you can say, you know, about him. So he's the assistant uh, director of uh, the State Health Service Department and also the nodal officer of non-communicable diseases of Kerala State Health Services. And uh, uh, he has got tremendous experience uh, in non-communicable disease prevention as far as Kerala is concerned. And uh, some of the uh, uh, flagship programs uh, introduced by Kerala government under the health service system. And Dr. Bibin Gopal is a part of, of those programs, especially the district cancer control program. Uh, and uh, he's, a, I mean, he's a recipient of uh, many awards, like the Best Doctor Award from the Government of Kerala in the year 2015, and also got the UN uh, Award for Non-Communicable Disease in the year 2020, and so many other awards also. So uh, I think it will be a good experience for all of us to learn from him and uh, to share so that uh, uh, we, can, I mean, we can also understand what are the things happening um, in the state health service department and state health service department, and moreover, we can also 
use those things and use those messages for our Kerala preventive uh, onco summit. I mean, I mean, for our Kerala Cancer Cruiser Program, and thereby by 2030 we can make a change um, in the Kerala Cancer Control. Um, I mean, Cancer Control Program. At least if we can reduce the burden of cancers like the common cancers occurring in our state, uh, I think uh, it will be a great boon for the people of Kerala. So over to Dr. Bhutti. Thank you, Jagarshan sir, for those kind words. Uh, so say very good evening to all of you. Uh, respected uh, Mohan sir, respected uh, Rijo Matthew sir, uh, respected Dr. Avni, uh, Dr. Jay Krishnan, and all other dignitaries who are on the uh, online platform. Uh, let me uh, at the onset thank each and every one of you for inviting me for such a talk. Uh, this is a cross-learning where I can learn from your side and you can also guide me how to go about in the future. So this, I think this is the learning process and uh, uh, I thank uh, the Swasti Foundation uh, for um, creating such a platform for uh, uh, this knowledge transfer. So my uh, acquaintance with uh, Mohan sir, uh, it lasts uh, for more than uh, 10 years. Uh, when I was the nodal officer of uh, uh, the PNDT program and sir was the president of IRIA Kerala chapter. So we had uh, many sessions for PNDT, uh, one at Kochi where IRIA was, the, everybody was invited to that stage. And uh, um, luckily I could uh, share the dais uh, with uh, Mohan sir uh, when I was awarded the um, best doctor award in health service department in 2015. And at that time, Mohan sir was the best doctor awardee for the DME side. So we all, we both received this award in the same day. So that is a, a nice uh, introduction, which I can say. And uh, coming to the subject, um, cancer is now taken um, as the most serious subject by government of Kerala. Um, the Kerala uh, cancer strategy was announced by the, uh, the, the Kerala government actually five years back. And based on that strategy, several new programs evolved around. And for the first one was the formation of a cancer board, which included the experts from uh, uh, the cancer field, both from the private and the government side, and also the directors of the uh, regional cancer centers from Trivandrum, Kochi, and Malabar, Malabar area, Malabar Cancer Center. And based on that, several new programs were initiated. So with that introduction, I will share my screen right now. Um, and uh, this is the health profile, Kerala profile, demographic profile. We have a population of nearly uh, three crores, 38 lakhs, 39 lakhs. We have a population of uh, women, which is much higher than uh, men, which is quite good. We have a higher population density, 859, which is one of the highest in India. And we have a literacy rate of uh, 93. We have a low IMR rate of six per thousand live births. We have a low MMR of 30 per one lakh um, live per births. And we have a life expectancy as uh, Mohan Sarah has told. We have a life expectancy of 75, uh, the 72 for males and 79 for females, which is one of the highest in India. So this is a very good figure as far as uh, Kerala is concerned. Whenever we go for a presentation uh, at the national level or at the in international level, this figure is quite good. But if you consider the non-communicable diseases, we are on the highest epidemiological transition zone. And that has led to the changing lifestyle and rampant urbanization. And due to this changing lifestyle, we had a lot of NCDs in our bouquet. We, the, the, the prevalence of hypertension in the community is 38%, which is one of the highest in India. The prevalence of diabetes is uh, as per the new study, it is nearly 35 percentage as per the INDIAB study, which is one of the highest in India. Kerala is considered to be the diabetic capital. And the obesity among women, it is one of the highest previously to Punjab. Now we have overtaken Punjab in the uh, obesity category. And due to these risk factors, uh, the emergence of chronic diseases have actually uh, started and it is rising at a record pace. We have the highest number of renal diseases in the country. The number of uh, dialysis units in Kerala under the health services department is 98. 
it is we cannot see such huge number of dialysis uh, units anywhere in the country but even then even after installing this 98 centers we have a high backlog of cases and if you look at cancer uh, dr joy krishnan may be um, explaining more on that uh, nearly 80000 new cases are reported every year as per the cancer registry of uh, rcc the copd cases are going up the the cardiovascular diseases uh, we have the highest number of heart attack deaths in india so if we look at the ncd profile we are standing at the tip of an iceberg we have all kinds of uh, risk factors in the community we have the tobacco issue even though the tobacco usage has come down from 21 percentage to 12 percentage as per the gats report alcohol usage is very high in the state nearly 44 percentage of the population young adults are um, um, addicted to alcohol we follow a very unhealthy diet for right from kasaragod to um, parshala if you travel by bus you can see all kinds of eateries at both sides of the roads and uh, a very a very high number of people waiting outside these eateries and corresponding to the eateries number of medical shops have also come up and uh, we have a very uh, lazy um, lifestyle with a lack of exercise we have a, we are a highly stressed community it is not actually la- the lack of awareness but the semi awareness or the wrong awareness about the diseases awareness about the wrong awareness about the diseases awareness about the wrong awareness about the diseases awareness i can hear my voice back can you yeah yeah sorry sir you can uh, just ah, okay <laughs> okay so this is the uh, the current scenario of risk factors for ncd so uh, according to the achidamenon center for health science studies uh, the ncd survey uh, the uh, one out of 3 in kerala is having hypertension and one out of 5 is having Uh, diabetes so this is one of a, uh, a very threatening uh, figure that has come out of the achidamenon uh, center study in association with the state in city control program and we also see that only 13 percentage of the hypertensives and 16 percentage of the diabetic patients are getting back to normal control rate even after treatment for 6 months so the control rate is also very poor usually by the international standards the control rate for any non communicable disease should be above 50 percent but it is only 13 and 16 in kerala and there is a reversal of social gradient if ncds were a disease of the affluent class previously now it has become the disease of the common man disease of the middle um, uh, middle income and the lower income year, age group so the icmr in uh, indian institute of diabetes in the app study shows that 35 percentage are diabetic and 15 percentage are pre diabetic and if you look at the hypertension also uh, it is a rule of half out of the 100 hypertensive patients only 144 are aware of their status only 37 are on treatment and only 13 have their blood pressure under control and what the ncd control program is look, um, doing to uh, resist the rise in NC, uh, the ncds we have ncd clinics functional in all the community health centers all the primary care centers all the uh, sub centers uh, and all the district level and the taluk level hospitals and kerala is the only state where ncd clinics are functional at all levels of healthcare and we have ncd screenings at the festivals at the camps at the railway stations at the melas we have the tribal ncd uh, clinics uh, or the mobile ncd clinics and uh, um, uh, the keron wheels uh, which is the mobile ncd clinic at the hilly areas and the keron waves which is the um, uh, mobile ncd clinic at the water logged areas and we have in the last 3 years we have screened over 1 crore 24 lakhs people or a 30 years of age and we have diagnosed more than 9 lakh 87000 new cases of high diabetes and 13 lakh 54000 new cases of hypertension so this is the um, um, revolution that is going on at the peripheral level at the at the grassroots level 
our our primary care centers our sub centers our community level health, health centers are doing a massive screening for the ncds in the common population in the population who doesn't know their status and we have come out with a new diagnosis of over 20 lakhs and regarding the cancer care mohan sir has already told the issues in cancer care there are inequities in cancer care that is regarding the affordability how much the people can afford how much cancer care the people are able to access how much acceptability is there for the treatment so these are the uh, things which come under consideration we, when we think about the cancer care in the health services department so the affordability is one of the main factor it is mainly finance because people uh, soon after they realize that they are uh, they are diagnosed with cancer they immediately think about the finance of it many people are selling their properties their houses whatever they have earned in their entire uh, life food they are selling for the management of cancer this is a, a hard reality the newer treatment uh, modalities are coming in which is uh, actually uh, uh, taxing much on the patients with an exorbitant treatment cost and we all tend to have indiscriminate use of treatment modalities even for a patient who is dying even for a palliative patients we are trying with the new medicines uh, new kinds of treatment so uh, maybe that is for the for rescuing a patient but there is an indiscriminate use of treatment modalities and the government facilities which provided cancer care were only limited we have a regional cancer center at the southern end we have a uh, cancer care center cochin cancer center at the uh, middle end and we have a malabar cancer center at the northern end and in between we have uh, five major medical colleges and uh, um, some of the government uh, district level hospitals like gh chernakulam these are the only hospitals providing cancer treatment comprehensive cancer treatment at the government sector and there is an inadequate treatment schemes the financing schemes the insurances these are all creating the uh, issues in affordability there is a karunya scheme now it has become cash and people can avail up to 5 lakhs per year but that is for five patients five family members for a year so how much uh, is 5 lakhs for in a cancer treatment is something we can imagine 5 lakhs is nothing previously we had karunya which offered up to 3 lakhs and uh, there are schemes uh, like rbsk uh, for the children actually which is providing much uh, much help to the children because there is no financial gap and the poor insurance coverage as we mentioned right now and there is a neglected middle class people at the lower end or below the poverty line they get some kind of an insurance in the form of cash or in the form of government um, financial programs and people at the top level they can afford a cancer management but there are a, there is a section of people who are actually working in uh, unorganized sectors who are actually working in government sector but at, at the lower end of the um, uh, of the cadre uh, these are people who are in the apl uh, who are above the bpl list or the, who are in the brim of the apl list but they cannot actually afford any kind of treatment these are the people actually who are much suffering uh, in the cancer management so affordability is one big issue and accessibility there is an indist in uh, equitable distribution of treatment facilities in trivandrum if you look there is a, a regional cancer center there is a trivandrum medical college there is a, um, the kims hospital many private hospitals who are providing treatment but if you and ernakulam there are many facilities in calicut there is many facilities but if you look at idiki or if you look at palakkad if you look at other districts of kerala there is no treatment facility at all and people have to depend on the rccs for their treatment which is adding to their burden their physical uh, burden is increased their financial burden is increased their emotional burden is increased so there is an inequitable distribution of treatment facilities across kerala it is not at all uniform 
I have as I told, there are only three RCCs, five medical colleges, and sparse distribution of technological as, um, advancement. So now the newer kind of treatment modalities are uh, tried on patients. But how many patients are able to uh, attain, achieve that? Who are, who are able to access that? People coming to the RCC may be able to do, uh, access that. People coming to Malabar cancer may access for to some extent. But what about the people living in the cancer patients living in other areas of Kerala? Where will they go for this technological advancement? So the accessibility to the technological advancement, right, and like the newer treatments, it is also uh, questionable. And the ignorance about the health systems, because nowadays the health department is doing a lot of things. The medical colleges are doing a lot of things. The RCCs are doing a lot of things. Many financial schemes are there. Many support schemes are there. But the people are not aware of that. Once they hear that they are having cancer, they think that it is the end of everything. So there, there is a, uh, one, uh, then the shortage of specialists is one another big issue that Kerala Health Services Department is facing. Even though we have started cancer care clinics in 24 of our hospitals, uh, only very few oncologists are there in the system. There are many radiotherapists, but some of the systems are managed by our uh, MBBS people who are trained in RCC and Malabar Cancer Center for Comprehensive Cancer Care. So the lack of specialists is one big problem that the Kerala Health, Health Services is facing. And the telemedicine system, which is one of one big area where this technological advancement can actually bring down the gap of treatment facilities, it is also not that developed. RCC has got a very good telemedicine facility, but how much that is used by the other doctors, the other systems for treating their patients is actually questionable. So there is a problem of accessibility. And access, uh, acceptability. So even though we are providing uh, some many kinds of treatment, many communities are not willing to take treatment due to their cultural reasons, due to their um, beliefs, uh, or they may tend to go to other systems of medicine. They may tend to um, end up in the, some of the quacks and they may go to acupuncture, many kinds of treatment, and they all finally end up in uh, chronic uh, cancer uh, or terminal cancer illness. So literacy is one issue. People who know about cancer, who, who know about treatment facilities, is actually helping them a lot. Gender. Actually, there is a, um, we see that the majority of our cancer patients are uh, female patients, but the patients who are getting treatment from RCC or from the treatment facilities, mainly males. So there is a uh, difference in that um, sexual equation. Cultural factors are there. Age is one factor. For a child or for a young adult, people will spend uh, as much of their income for the treatment, but for the old, old, uh, people tend to neglect their medical needs. So these are some of the acceptability issues which are prevalent in the state. So how to close this gap? We have to decentralize the cancer care. We should actually bring down the cancer care from the major hospitals to the lower level hospitals where people can access and afford. So that is one thing which uh, and, and in the health services department we are doing. And there should be some kind of an insurance uh, for every person who are, um, who are diagnosed of cancer. Because any person who is in the APL list can become a BPL once the treatment uh, procedure starts. There, there should be the financial assistance schemes and there should be a cancer grid, uh, which is one of the uh, major objective of the Kerala cancer policy where the private hospitals, <coughs> the local hospitals, and the major cancer centers are um, connected to each other. It's a network of hospitals. And as Mohan sir has told, we should increase the awareness about cancer. We should uh, try to downstage the uh, cancer incidents just by increasing the ca cancer awareness. The people should um, realize that this can be cancer. This should be treated. 
and this can be cured. So the word cure was not there in the cancer dictionary for a long period. But now, as uh, Dr. Mohan sir has told, we have cure and the people should know it. So this is the, this is the way we can close the gap. And uh, if you look at the Kerala map, you can see that we have a RCC at the lower end, Malabar cancer cell at the northern end. And the people from all corners of um, the state are coming to RCC or the Malabar Cancer Center, uh, which was overburdening these institutions. So the Kerala government in 2013, we started, um, we wrote a proposal for starting the, uh, the comprehensive cancer management at the district level hospitals and the taluka level hospitals. Even though there was a lot of confusion in the beginning, that was approved. Uh, that was at the time when Dr. Paul Sebastian was the director of RCC and uh, Dr. Sadish was at the Madhubar Cancer Center and uh, Mr. Raji Sodanandan sir was the um, uh, health secretary. So uh, it was my proposal which was accepted by the government and uh, um, the comprehensive district cancer care centers were established uh, in 24 hospitals right now. These are working in the district level hospitals. These are working in the uh, taluka level hospitals where there is a radiotherapist or a trained doctor who is trained in uh, comprehensive uh, cancer therapy at the RCC or the Malabar Cancer Center with a certificate. And the, the patients from the RCC, patients from the medical college who are diagnosed of the disease, who are initiated on a treatment will now will have the follow-up treatment at these centers. So at the 24 hospitals, we don't start the treatment. We do the screening there, we diagnose the cases there, but once the diagnosis is made, we send the patients to the RCC or the medical college. And once the treatment is started, the follow-up chemotherapy is done at these district cancer care hospitals. So at the COVID time, when the transportation of patients was very difficult, we used this system extensively for the management of all the patients who were actually depending on regional cancer center to run. Over one lakh patients, over one lakh chemotherapies were given during this time. And these chemotherapies were the same treatment which, were, which the patient used to receive at the RCC. Those medicines were pushed to the uh, district level hospitals and taluk level hospitals. And there is a network of all the doctors with the RCC. They can talk to each other and they uh, imparted the same treatment which was given at the RCC at the district level hospital and at the taluk level hospitals. So it is a, um, a success saga. Uh, in the Kerala um, uh, history of health, health services. And regarding our subject today, cancer screening, how effective is our cancer screening strategies? RCC is conducting cancer screening programs. Malabar Cancer Center is uh, uh, having cancer screening programs. Health Services Department is regularly doing cancer screening programs. But these cancer, cancer screening programs are mainly, mostly opportunities. People who are coming to the system, people who are brought to the camps, they only are getting screened for cancer. That is only, we are only fishing at the banks of a big river or an ocean. We are getting only, only a very few people uh, in the screening program. Only a small section of the population is covered. And this late diagnosis leads to poor prognosis. And there are standalone programs in uh, health services department, in uh, uh, medical colleges, in our regional cancer centers, but there is no uh, a consolidated or a concerted effort to, to, to uh, screen the entire population, the risk population of Kerala. So the only strategy which can help this situation is the population-based screen. big challenge. So what are the challenges in front of us? One is we cannot screen the entire population for cancer. That is a big risky job. It is a time consuming job. It is an expensive job. It, it, is a, uh, it is not at all cost effective. So 
we have to stratify the patients who needs to be screened. That is the first point. And we have to cover the entire eligible population. So those people who actually require cancer screening should be picked from the community. So how to do that? And if you pick from the community, if you collect the data of these people manually, how are we going to uh, do the calculation? How are we do, going to uh, do the uh, collation works with such huge manual data? So the, and another challenge is, how do we arrange screening facilities? Do we have so much of screening facilities under our system? Can the RCC lead or can the MC, MCC lead or the CCRC lead these screening uh, systems for the entire population? How are you going to arrange the diagnostics for this? And how are we arrange the treatment facilities for those who are diagnosed? So once if you diagnose a patient, you must provide treatment for them. Otherwise, it is a huge sin that you are going to do to that patient. So these were the challenges which were in front of us um, when we thought about the cancer, comprehensive cancer screening or the population-based cancer screening. So we thought about it. We had several deliberations about it. And finally, we came up with a new program called the, the tech, we had the technology-based solution for the population-based screening, which we are, I'm going to describe right now. So we developed an application called Shaili. Shaili means Jivida Shaili. Shaili app, it was developed by our eHealth. Uh, eHealth is one system um, where, which is providing the electronic solutions, the IT technology solutions for the health services department. So the mobile Android application was developed by the eHealth and we trained our ASHA workers in, in getting the data using the Shaili app. So one ASHA has to cover 500 houses under her jurisdiction, 500 house and maybe 2000 to 1500 population. So ASHA has a, 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 a margin Asha has got a jurisdiction and Asha has to go to every house and collect the data of all 30 plus population in a community-based assessment checklist form. And this community-based assessment checklist form was digitized as the, uh, as the Shaili app. And the Asha doesn't have to write anything in her mobile. The Asha just have to click every questionnaire. So the questionnaire was prepared with the help of RCC. And it was the questionnaire which was uh, uh, developed by the Community Oncology Department of the RCC, which we are using in the, using in the Shaili application. So all persons who have a CBSE score or the community-based assessment checklist score above four will be subjected to screening. There is a scoring point. So when a patient uh, he is asked about his uh, smoking habit, his drinking habit, his family history about uh, cancer. Um, so, so there are such questions which, which are the leading questions. And if there is a positive answer, every everything is scored as one, uh, zero, and all. And if the score is above four, they will be subjected to screening at the nearest primary care center or at the community health center. And there is an auto messaging system. If the, if the score is above four, an automatic message will be transferred, will be sent from the uh, mobile phone of the ASHA worker to the mobile phone of the patient. And also one copy will be sent to the concerned JPHN. So she has to um, enumerate how many patients were referred for screening. And she has to ensure that all those patients who have the score risk score of above four is screened or their NCD status is assessed. So uh, at the first phase, we selected one panchayat in one, one assembly constituency. That means 140 panchayats in Kerala. And there is a real time dashboard for the administrators. Every time one ASHA worker uploads a figure, we get the information at the district level and at the state level. 
So if I at looking at my mobile, I can say that so this much this much number of people were screened across Kerala, and this much number of people were diagnosed of cancer, or uh, say referred for cancer, referred for oral cancer, referred for breast cancer, and uh, uh, this much patients had diabetes, or this much patients have the symptoms of COPD. So this dashboard is available with the state level uh, administrators and the district level administrators. And uh, the complete data collection we are expected um, to have by 2023, that means the entire Kerala state. And we are planning to uh, repeat the screening. It's as a yearly screening in the next year and the coming years also. So this is the uh, nutshell of what we have till September. The 19 lakhs people were screened till September. We found, found that 4 lakhs 46 thousand people have comorbidities, 25,000 of them were homebound, 14,000 of them were bedridden, 3,60,000 were found to have CBSC score above 4, 1,33,000 people were uh, referred for cancer screening, and like that for the TB screening, for the respiratory evaluation, for the addictions, so we have a data real-time data from the community. So this is not an extrapolated figure. This is not something which we uh, calculate by statistical methods. This is the real-time data. And we have the line list of all the patients which are uh, screened here at the uh, with the medical officer in the concern period. So this is the uh, district-wise screening. Uh, Vainad has completed all the panchayats, nearly 112 percentage of the population. Which, is, which was interested to them. And uh, in Kerala, we have 53 percentage totally covered till now. And uh, the percentage of uh, the proportion of people, person, uh, person screened. And this is the screening summary. So if we look at the screening done, the screen, the CBSC for score above four, we will get a district wise data. And the cancer screening, the persons who actually had some symptoms of cancer, not these are not diagnostic, who are referred for cancer screening, we could get from this data. And when we analyzed it, we can analyze this data based on the age group. This is the CBSC score above um, um, four. We can analyze the data. Uh, based on the uh, age group, based on the female, male, transgender, and we will get a total figure of 19 percentage. And those people who are referred for cancer screening, we, we will get a stratified um, age-wise, sex-wise figure, how many patients had uh, the risk of cancer, at what age, what sex. So this is the evaluation of 19 lakhs people which we got and we have the line list of all these patients and for the oral cancer screening we can further certify that uh, again the age group the sex the, we will get a figure the cervical and breast cancer, cancer screening um, nearly uh, 12 percentage of the females who were examined were referred for uh, breast cancer screening and 2.1 percentage were referred to uh, for cervical cancer screening. So this is the way we are collecting the reports. And this is going to be completed in the entire Kerala state by uh, January uh, 2023 or by February 2023. So we'll, we will get a consolidated figure of uh, the, the screening status. So only this population who are actually uh, having the risk factor of cervical for cervical cancer, for cervical cancer breast, and for, for the oral cancer need to be screened. We don't need to screen the entire population. We can stratify, we can uh, get the actual persons who need the screening, which is uh, affordable to the health system, which is accessible to the community. So, 
these are some of the other figures and if you look at the addictions also so any kind of addiction alcoholism smoking smokeless tobacco so uh, this report is also available with us and uh, we can get a, again a stratified report on any addiction any smoke uh, any kind of smoking alcoholism district wise or even phc wise or even ward wise we will get the report and this is the dashboard which i am talking of and i have a dashboard right now with my in my mobile phone any time i can access the, this data how many patients were screened how many di new diagnoses were done how many patients are already having diabetes how many patients are already having hypertension how many patients have the risk for um, cancers how many have the risk for oral cancer breast cancer cervical cancer in the tb uh, copd so everything we are getting in this dashboard at any point it's a real time data that we are getting so after this uh, uh, after getting this data we do an indicator based evaluation the screening indicator out of the total population how many were screened uh, and the diagnosis indicator out of the person screen how many were diagnosed out of the persons diagnosed how many were put on treatment and out of the persons put on treatment how many were controlled so this is the indicator based evaluation that we are doing right now and after screening what should happen so we have a district cancer care program which is uh, which was actually done in ernakulam district last year and which is expanded to all uh, districts and as a part of the district cancer care program we have the testing facilities for breast cervical and oral cancer done at the primary centers we have a staff nurse exclusively for ncds the middle level <coughs> health supervisor who is a staff nurse who is actually trained to do uh, the uh, viability test then the breast examination and if a person is having suspected of oral cancer with the leukoplakia or submucal fibrosis they will be referred to the next level of hospital so there is a uh, sample transport system so if a sample is taken at the uh, private primary care center or at a taluk level hospital that sample will be collected from the hospital by a transport mechanism uh, which will uh, the which uh, the vehicle which will cover every center on a particular day and they will collect the samples and they will uh, give the samples to the district level uh, uh, the public health lab at the district or at the district health hospital or at the medical college and there is a lab ldms property uh, portal the lab diagnostic uh, portal uh, which is which will give the report back to the phc or at the medical college uh, promptly and uh, the treatment will be initiated the persons who are diagnosed of confirmed of the diagnosis they will be sent for treatment at the rcc or at the medical college and Uh, once the treatment is initiated at the rcc the patient will be given the follow up treatment treatment at the district cancer care centers which is there in 24 of our uh, district and taluk level hospitals so the final goal is the early detection of cancers so by doing a community based assessment uh, a community based screening we will actually know how many patients are in the risk group and um, Uh, we can actually do the early detection of cancers and the downstage of cancer if you look at the cervical cancer per se uh, uh, even though the uh, the incidence of uh, cervical cancer is very less compared to um, or oral cancer or breast cancer the case fatality rate is very high just because of the reason that people the ladies doesn't want to disclose the symptoms of cancer cervical cancer at an early stage they are uh, shy of talking about um, um, the bleed, uh, bleeding uh, and contact bleeding uh, dyspareunia or any symptoms related to that but when an asha worker is asking a leading question do you have bleeding uh, during intercourse do you have pain during intercourse she will definitely answer so that is the way we are picking the cases from the community so we can actually downstage the cancer especially the cervical cancer and we are uh, we are planning for a population based uh, cancer registry which is also 
uh, a part of the e-health program and a hospital-based cancer registry where all the private and the uh, public partners, the uh, cancer treating centers can be a part of. And that is called the Cancer Care Suit, which is on, on the development phase. And uh, by November 1st, we are expecting to launch the Cancer Care Suit in Kerala. So that is the story of the Health Services Department. And thank you very much. So can I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, please. So uh, it was a wonderful presentation, Dr. Bibin Kobal, and uh, State Health Services of Kerala is doing a wonderful job. Let, uh, let us all congratulate you for taking this lead and the entire team at the State uh, Health Department for having conceived this idea of decentralized cancer care, decentralized care. Just one question here is, uh, NCD clinic, it's, uh, as we are in this epidemiological transition, now that many parts of India, including southern parts of India and western parts of India, are having those uh, non-communicable diseases on the rise. So definitely the cardiovascular diseases, the uh, cancers, the uh, degenerative diseases are all, all on the rise. So the, definitely there is a need for an NCD clinic. That is something that you've already mentioned that has become part of the health services. But it's still not happening uh, because uh, as far as Kerala is concerned, I feel uh, maybe 60% of healthcare needs are still met by the private sector. So in that case, how can we integrate, how can we encourage the private sector also to be a part of this uh, NCD clinics? This is essentially a uh, campaign, essentially something that has to be integrated into the health system all over India. So what are your suggestions on that? So uh, actually, uh, we have actually thought about it. Uh, so as a part of uh, uh, the NCD control program, the NCD control clinics, we are doing a regular screening at the sub-center level and at the uh, uh, clinic level, at uh, the primary care center level. But the uh, one of the finding is that majority of the patients who are coming to the uh, clinics are females. We miss the male component. But actually, the male uh, counterparts, they are not able to visit the NCD clinic at the daytime because of their work schedules. So they are mainly depending on the smaller private sector clinics at the off times. So this has actually led us to think about uh, integrating with the private sector. And uh, we have actually talked to the IMA and we have also talked to the QPMBA uh, regarding the integration of the NCD control program with the smaller level private hospital, not with the, with the corporate hospitals, but with the smaller level uh, hospitals. And we agreed to provide free medicines. Whatever medicines we are providing at the primary care level, at the primary care institutions, we are also, we are providing up to insulin. The human mixed art is provided at the PHC level. So we can provide the same medicines at the private hospital level on one condition that they should follow our treatment protocol. And for the medicines which are given free of cost, they should not charge the patient for the medicines. So such talks are going on and uh, possibly um, we will have a private sector integration with the NCD control program in this year itself. Because many of the private hospitals in Trivandrum district, we, we have we have already already only talked about the hospitals in Trivandrum. They have actually agreed to our conditions, and uh, we are waiting for our medicine stocks to come in so that we can provide free medicines to these private level hospitals. Okay. And uh, the the conditions are one, um, they should pro they should stick on to our treatment protocol. Second, they should not charge for the medicines, and the third thing, uh, they have to report. Uh, the the um, data which is generated there to the health services department back. Uh, Dr. Jay Krishnan, uh, I, I got a question for you. I, I, as I understand from Dr. Bipin Gobal that uh, uh, Community Oncology Department of Regional Cancer Center has formulated the questionnaire uh, to, to be integrated as part of the Shaili app. So what were the priorities given for that? As you Have you integrated the uh, NCD component or is it just the cancer uh, component in load? Yeah, for the uh, cancer prevention part, we have included only the cancer component. So our focus is mainly on three common cancers like 
oral, cervix, and breast cancer. So based on that, uh, that question was the uh, question was developed, and uh, they will integrate into that uh, MCD. Already they have the a set of questions there, so they will integrate these questions into that uh, MCD question. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bipin Kabal, just to understand yes. the flow flow of uh, flow uh, of uh, uh, happening. Or, or suppose this Asha worker goes there into 500 houses allocated to her, and in a family, she tries to collect data from all the. She asks these questions to all the family members, or yeah, how, yeah. how is it that? No, 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 no. Only the persons above 30 years of age, she has to collect the data, and persons who are actually. Uh, NRIs who are actually living outside the uh, jurisdiction, they need not collect the data. Um, the only persons who are uh, present there, she has to collect the data directly because uh, regarding the addictions, um, the smoking, diet and all, uh, the, the ASHA has to talk to the patient. And sometimes the ASHA may have to go two or three times, uh, sometimes on off days, like Sundays, uh, to, get the, to get the data of the mail. Uh, uh, persons and we are providing we are giving an incentive of rupees five um, for every entry so an asha will get nearly ten thousand rupees if she covers her and their um, population okay, okay right so that so, uh, uh, incentive is uh, prompting her uh, to go to more houses okay right so uh, we uh, during our discussions in uh, Toronto mongo summit we had thought about a uh, in uh, training the skilled navigators and integrating the Kudumbasri, which is the women empowerment groups in Kerala, which has got nearly 45 lakh members. And in fact, as I understand, Sosti and Kudumbasri has signed an agreement to train the uh, leaders of Kudumb resource persons of Kudumbasri uh, for such a kind of. So this uh, Jay Krishnan, uh, such a kind of app has got, or can we integrate the Shaili app for this particular uh, this thing, or do we have to uh, rework this whole thing again. Or uh, Shaili app, is it, uh, uh, is it possible for it to be used by NGOs and uh, private hospitals, private establishments? Dr. Bipin or Dr. J. Krishnan? Uh, uh, right now, um, Shaili app for the population-based screening, uh, it is uh, done by the ASHAs because only the, the ASHA has got a jurisdiction she has got a fixed number of houses so uh, so right now we can entrust this job only to the ashes because then only we will get a hundred percent figure okay. uh, because they are answerable they are answerable to the per persons who are living in her jurisdiction so entrusting this job to Kudumbasri or uh, um, ngos uh, for the collection of data uh, through Shaili app is not possible. But, but one thing that we can do is that uh, from the Shaili app, we are getting a uh, rich, resourceful data of every community, every region. So we can share that data to the Kudumbashri workers or the NGOs so they can start working on the uh, um, control part or the management side. Right. That, That's an excellent idea. Be because, yeah, because what we understand, what we uh, envisage by the integration of uh, skilled navigators or the Kudumbasri or the NSS students or the student cadet, uh, cadet police or all these things is to utilize their services because when it, when it comes to when they are trained on these things when they come go back to their home or cover uh, at least four or five neighborhood uh, areas neighborhood uh, this thing and they will be in a better position to. Uh, motivate these people for a screening uh, for to reach to the service providers. So this is one idea we had at that uh, point of time because just uh, Asha workers is now taking the data, but once a uh, high risk group is identified, uh, whether they are Asha workers, motivation is enough to take them, or is it a mandatory process that uh, Asha worker will have to? Do? Uh, How is it only, uh, envisaged? Only if that patient is screened that loop will be closed. So that will remain an unclosed loop in the system. So it is the responsibility of the ASHA worker to prompt that patient to uh, come to the screening center. Or if the patient is not coming, the health worker will try to push her. And even if, even then the patient is not willing, the third thing that we are doing is home-based screening. Our field workers will go to their house and do the screening at the doorstep. So that is the third, but we don't announce that initially because if we say that, 
everybody will be sitting in their house waiting for the health worker to come and do the test okay. right so uh, one question that one uh, one thing that i have realized in kerala is uh, the detection rates of early stage uh, stage 1 of uh, breast cancers in kerala is still 30% most of the cancers uh, is detected at stage 3 or stage 4 especially for head and neck cancers uh, csrvx and especially the uh, even 70% of breast cancers also so what i realized from this is uh, many people who comes come uh, come to the doctors for a stage 3 or stage 4 they might have seen some gps or some doctors gynecologists or sometimes uh, three or four doctors they might have seen but what i understood is there is no focus on the part of the medical community at the general practitioners levels or gynecologists level or the primary physician primary level to have the screening protocols for uh, or for ncds as well as for cancers so how do, how can we tackle that what are your suggestions this question is open to all the three panelists dr bibin kobal dr jay krishna and dr avin dr bibin kobal first okay so uh, we we can imagine the rush uh, at a primary care center or to a gynecologist the um, the high burden of uh, patients is one thing which is deterring um, the diagnosis of the uh, small easily findable things because such a suspicion will not come to their mind uh, unless the patient himself or herself say that symptoms that's why if we stratify that patient if you uh, mark that patient as the high risk and you are sending to the doctor saying that this patient is high risk for cancer then the doctor will definitely screen for the uh, or have a suspicion of the diseases so the cbac form uh, which the asha worker is filling so that is giving a label that this patient is having a risk group is in the risk group either for the ncds or for the cancer so with, when the patient enters the Uh, doctors opd with that label it is easy for the doctor to uh, diagnose or go for other investigations and uh, i uh, uh, requested dr jayakrishnan also to comment on this um, thank you dr vibhin it's a uh, you know a, a very wonderful presentation so based on the discussions which we have till now so what i want to ask you is that see uh, we have already screened 19 lakh population and um, Uh, we have a uh, low, like a cbac score of 4 plus we have this many number of people that is almost 50% of the population of kerala has been screened that is 30 years and up so cancer is a disease which has got lot of stigma associated with it and um, we are going to face an important challenge that is uh, you know uh, like you know i mean once you are having a score of 4 and you are asking the patient to come out to a family health center or a phc or chc and uh, saying that you have this uh, so you have to go to the uh, psc so how are you going to uh, tackle those apprehensions like sometimes it can be a false positive case correct so for example uh, for example a breast lump i mean i mean i mean they may come with a lump so maybe uh, i mean most of them are benign so or else uh, some sort of a traumatic ulcer in that uh, in the Uh, with a uh, you know a lot of uh, signs and symptoms mimicking cancers and uh, coming to a clinic so how are we going to address the issue of uh, false positives and uh, of course yeah. false negatives also there but i think more of false positives yeah uh, so th- this is one of yeah. the biggest challenge that we are facing uh, uh, regarding the diagnosis um because uh, when we say, when we do the screening uh, verbal screening and send the patient to the phc or the health center the people will get anxious so that's the reason why in all the trainings we have asha we have um, directed the asha not to disclose any diagnosis so just say your risk factor is high and you have a chance of having Uh, ncds don't mention cancer and this is this test is done just to rule out that you don't have that disease so that's the way we are we have asked the ashas to communicate to the patients and uh, um, uh, right now we have completed screening in a minor district 
and many patients who are, uh, are asked to uh, come to the PHCs and they are slowly coming up. Uh, and out of the patients who have come uh, to the uh, Vinard clinics for screening, uh, three of them are having oral cancer. Their diagnosis were actually made, uh, but we have not actually disclosed that because that disclosure should come from the oncologist. Uh, so uh, there are cases. So we cannot uh, um, go back uh, with the fear of uh, having uh, raising an apprehension among the public. Anyway, this is a reality uh, in the community, especially in the tribal areas of Vinod or other places. There's a high incidence of oral cancer. So and another thing I want to ask you is that, for example. Uh, Whatever uh, projects, uh, say for example, if you do a project like the Trivandrum Oral Cancer Screening Study, which was done by RCC yes. some few years back. So in a project mode, they have a start, uh, starting, start date is there and an end date. Is there. So within that uh, controlled, uh, what do you say, atmosphere, something like that, we, uh, these people, these trained volunteers will go to the houses, uh, collect uh, uh, details, then Will come to the. Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, they will uh, they will refer the patient to that uh, respective clinics and all. And we found that uh, uh, instead of uh, doing uh, a screening program as such for the entire population, it is always better to do a screening among high risk groups, as far as oral cancer is concerned. I'm I'm, I'm not talking about oral cancer. And uh, so. Uh, because in Tamil Nadu, what they have done is that they have a fantastic uh, cervical cancer screening project, but when they shifted to the program mode, I think uh, it got uh, some uh, I mean, some issues. So, um, like, what I want to ask is that, you know, when we start a program, uh, you know, it's so, it's a very innovative program, and uh, uh, the the health workers or the, or the volunteers are in a very good mood uh, to do all these things. After uh, like after a few months or maybe some one or two years, so that that thing can go down. And as you said, the, it's, I mean, you are, you are giving um, incentives. So uh, uh, in, that, in that long run, is a screening program, like a massive screening program, a viable option? Because I because we haven't seen a sort of uh, screening programs in developing countries. We have seen uh, organized cancer control uh, cancer screening programs in developed countries uh, like the Finnish uh, a program or something like uh, like in that European areas and all so uh, I mean if if we can do this as a sustainable program that's the best thing to do and do you think that it is a, a continuing process uh, for Kerala so that uh, it can become a model for other states as well in the long run Definitely, we can uh, think about that, uh, but we cannot compare uh, the population of Finland with uh, the population of Kerala. The, the, the population density is quite high, um, and uh, um, the risk factors also uh, in Kerala is quite high. So, uh, uh, what we are thinking uh, at the government of India level and at the state government level is that if we can continue the population-based screening as an annual health checkup for the entire population uh, by incentivizing the ASHA or the Kudubisri. We can run this program um, for several years. Um, and every year, the same persons, the same individuals will be re-screened because some symptoms may come up after one year. And new patients also will come uh, at the age group of uh, in the age group of 30 so rather, uh, if it, if it is in a project mode the problem is that we will be missing out many patients especially the cervical cancer patients are unlikely to come uh, if we don't ask the symptoms to them oral cancer patients definitely as you said they will come on a project mode because if we say that if the persons with the smoking the chewing uh, to come to the screening camp, they will definitely come, but not to the other cancers. So I think we can mix these models 
which our model is applicable to uh, the state of Kerala with the support of uh, the good minded people like uh, Sursti and uh, everybody on board. Definitely, we can think about new innovative ideas. So, uh, definitely, the help from RCC, uh, the help from CCRC, from Malabar Cancer Center is enormous. And definitely, Dr. Jay Krishnan and the um, entire RCC team uh, are with the health services department in developing such programs. In no, I think you are doing a very fantastic job because you cannot imagine the uh, the kind of uh, work you have, you know, implemented. I mean, I mean, you have made to make this program success. Nineteen lakh is a, it's, it's not a small number, you know. Fifty percent of the population is being covered, and uh, now we will get an idea of uh, uh, the what are the policy uh, issues which have to be made uh, for cancer prevention control. And uh, adding to that point by Dr. Rijo. Like, uh, if you look into the uh, Kerala Cancer Control Strategy uh, by the uh, by the WHO guidelines and by the by the government of Kerala, so uh, what they have told they, I mean, they have some six strategies, something like that. So what they have told is that so we have to close the care gap, like uh, narrow the gap in terms of the uh, screening interval, the diagnostic interval, so that ultimately uh, our aim is to have a downstreaming of cancers. And you have got a good uh, um, and survival and improved quality of life. That's our ultimate aim. And to reduce the burden of cancers of Kerala. So in that case, um, I think uh, what is the reach of uh, uh, health service department? Uh, 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 like, uh, no, you. I mean, you have got a very well knit health system network. I mean, I mean that's a, a very good one for our state, and um, uh, and especially for that rural area, excellent, excellent work. And uh, what is the uh, reach of uh, all these activities in uh, the urban centers? Like, for example, in a corporation area or, uh, I mean, or a municipality where, I mean, are these health workers able to penetrate into the uh, you know, uh, apartment complex and ask these questions and all and get those good answers like that? I mean, just a comment. You, you have raised a very important point. And actually, that is the area which... Uh, we are lacking a solution right now. So we have the health uh, system, well-oiled machinery in place in the rural areas, in the panchayats, um, at the taluk level, at the district, everywhere the health system is very strong, except in the corporations and municipalities. At municipalities, we do have some system, but at the corporation area, it is quite lacking. But we have a program called Urban Health Program, uh, urban health PHCs, which are functional in the corporation areas with a limited number of staff, uh, the ASHAs, uh, the urban ASHAs, the uh, JPHNs, who can do it in some uh, population, but not to all. And uh, uh, urban areas being uh, socially high, people won't entertain uh, these the health workers coming to their home, especially in the flats and all. Yeah, they won't even get a permission to get inside the flats and do that uh, verbal screening. So this is an area which actually uh, is a gray area for us. And we also don't find a good solution um, or a stable solution or an amicable solution which can be sustainable, made sustainable in the corporation area. So I welcome any suggestions from any of the uh, speakers to tackle this big problem. I, I think, uh, Dr. Pippin, what uh, we have to, because, see, somebody in an apartment complex, their uh, healthcare system is more uh, uh, linked with uh, the diagnostic uh, facilities in the private sector or in the uh, uh, private hospitals. So it's essential for us to integrate those uh, services also into the screening platform. Uh, then only because what they, they are generally avoiding the government sector. That is one of the reasons why they are not giving much of data to uh, this thing. That is one area that we can integrate them with the uh, provi service providers in the uh, private sectors too. Second thing is to reach out to this, I think we should uh, con uh, genuinely consider to utilize school students and uh, this uh, NSS and uh, the um, students in, uh, in a way, and especially the new age apps and all these things which will be Really, because by a click of button, they will be most of them will be will be getting an access to all these things. But then they should have the uh, they should feel that they can connect to them. Most of them are not connecting to the uh, 
government sectors of healthcare. That is the uh, one of the reasons why in the corporation area and the urban urbanized areas, uh, this uh, um, indifference is there. The, uh, Avni, do you want to okay. comment on that? Uh, I was just in general, I was about to comment, sir. First of all, Vipin, sir, it was a, there's a lot of immense work you have done. So definitely all that database is what finally helps make a framework for whatever we are planning. So uh, unlike the developed countries, we are still a developing country. So we do not have the same kind of resources or expertise or we do not have a structured program. So this kind of database is what is going to help. So this was a very great initiative that we have started. So at least we have started and it's always difficult to reach the rural population. At least the urban population has some acceptance or some knowledge to, to a limited level. But rural population, you're already um, getting into the rural population. So that is a very great thing. So maybe, maybe not a quick response. These things take a lot of time to build on. So uh, this is just probably the framework. So it will take time to build on, but I'm sure this will work into something bigger. And like uh, the other developing countries, we will have a structured program. But then again, like Riju sir and um, uh, Jay Krishna sir was mentioning, it's very difficult to reach the corporate sector. I mean, cooperation on the urban area, but I think that is there is one thing is there is a hesitancy towards uh, uh, government sector, but also there is a lot of safety issues that we have. So if it is coming through a government and if it is coming through, if you're going through resident associations or something like that, maybe you will be able to percolate a larger audience because each resident association, they wouldn't like any random people entering into their houses or in their sectors. It's primarily because of the safety issues. So if it goes through those kind of associations, then maybe you will be able to target a bundle of 100, 200 houses in a single go. So that way, maybe at least selected areas you would be able to target. So that was also a great option. But again, like you mentioned, sir, whatever the framework you're making is amazing because only on top of this, the things will start developing. So that is definitely... I think during co sir. during COVID, the ASHA workers had penetration into this uh, corporation area. So it must work. Yeah, it should. It is a hesitancy of what yeah. is it and whether it is safe, whether yeah. to let them in. But yeah. if that is clarified, then yes, I think we should be able right. to perfect. So uh, targeting the um, residents association, definitely, uh, like uh, Dr. Amir has told, uh, we will definitely try that because uh, that is the only way how, uh, we can penetrate into the uh, urban areas. So I think we have, Dr. Bipin Gopal, we must congratulate you for the kind of work that uh, you have pioneered and initiated. And uh, there is so much of uh, things to be learned and uh, we have to integrate and uh, put into use, especially the national radiology, this preventive radiology program. We, we want to integrate many of the things that, uh, that you have uh, explained here. And one, one more suggestion I have is to, uh, especially in this NCD clinics, we need to as part of the risk reduction, risk uh, those those identified with risk, we have to have some kind of a positive transformation remodeling kind of uh, uh, programs, maybe to increase the exercise activity or to have uh, uh, this thing on the diets, on the habit uh, habits and all these things. Unless and until that is uh, they also that part also is taken care of, we will be always creating this uh, uh, a, a fear element in uh, all those people who are approaching us. We need to bring in some sort of a positive, uh, a, 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 a part of contributing to the society, a part of building up uh, a, that kind of feel amongst the members uh, of the, amongst the citizens too. So uh, I thank you all for a wonderful uh, uh, involvement in this discussion. Uh, let, me, uh, uh, let me invite Avni to conclude the session today. So thank you so much, uh, all the sirs, because that was very insightful discussion. And like we are, uh, like we discussed just now, we are at the primary level. So of course, these kind of discussions is what is going to pay for a huge, bigger thing in the future. So that was a very insightful talk and a lot of discussion, fruitful discussion. Hopefully everyone found it useful. These uh, sessions are going to help us stick in our mind and stimulate our brains in con questioning and promoting ourselves to promote this for not just ourselves, not just for our own health, for the society also. So hopefully this is uh, useful for all of us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, uh, Bipin sir. And thank you, Jai Krishna sir. Thank you, Rijo sir. That was indeed very wonderful.
And this is just a reminder for everyone that we have a similar interesting session tomorrow at 8 p.m. by Dr. Kalavati MC, Associate Professor, Division of Community Oncology, RCC Trivandrum. And she would be speaking about breast cancer prevention, the perspectives of a preventive oncologist. And so uh, finally, after this wonderful, long but wonderful session, wrapping up at this note with a promise to keep forging ahead in the crusade towards cancer. See you all tomorrow for the session tomorrow at the same time. Take care and good night. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Good, good night. night. Thank you very much.